speak about oh right and speak about um, unitary dynamics and uh, topological classification of unitary dynamics. Um, all right, so I'll my bad. I'm using wrong presentation. Um, Yeah, it should be better now. Right. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll be talking about uh, one work that uh, came out this June. And it was done in uh, collaboration with uh, Yi Chen Hu from Princeton, who is in the audience. And uh, you can shoot him email with questions um, that is listed here. Um, so here is the plan. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, topological phases of unitary dynamics and uh, topological phases of uh, periodic unitary dynamics. And I will be often referring to the um, classification of quantum cellular automata. And while I'll show you our results on classification of uh, Floquet Clifford circuits. Um, so the main uh, results obtained within the so-called Clifford framework, which means that our unitaries generating the dynamics will be a Clifford unitaries. And I'll go, I'll explain in detail what it means. So we study uh, unitaries by their action on stabilizer Hamiltonians. And I'll explain how we can describe stabilizer Hamiltonians as a certain modulus over a ring of Laurent polynomials. And then I'll uh, introduce the notion of algebraic homotopy of modulus such that um, quantum cellular automata, non-trivial quantum cellular automata will correspond to connected components of certain space and uh, periodic uh, unitary dynamics will correspond to loops in a certain space. And we will classify homotopy classes of such loops using uh, uh, the so-called Maslow index. All right. Uh, so you might be familiar with the notion of adiabatic uh, um, connectivity of two many body states. So we say they are in the same phase of matter if there is a, a unitary generated by a local Hamiltonian that connects to the ground states. Um, and we say that they belong to the same phase. Um, and in some cases, such unitaries, uh, locally generated unitaries can be approximated by finite depth quantum circuits. Um, so in other words, I mean, uh, I can approximate them as a finite number of layers of quantum circuits. If you don't appreciate my uh, drawing, so here is the uh, uh, Yeah, and I will be always, I mean, I will be often uh, referring to finite depth quantum circuits as brick walls. Uh, so, and one of the key properties of uh, FDQCs or brick walls is that they preserve the locality of operators strictly. So if I take one operator, uh, support it on some, on a single site, and I evolve this operator with the FDQC, I obtain operator supported on some finite number of sites and with no exponential tails. And this is what refers to the uh, strict locality uh, compared to just locality. So, Within this talk, I'll be always, you know, interested in, in strict locality preserving uh, evolutions. And I'll be interested in more general uh, evolutions on the of local operators called quantum cellular automata. So these are, well, they are defined as uh, unitaries preserving the locality. So they map any local operator, locally supported operator to another uh, local operator with a possibly uh, bigger support. And uh, so the problem of classifying- Yeah, uh, 
Yeah, I'm actually listening to a talk. It should be fun. Sorry? Uh, I'm, I'm just following uh, classifying uh, quantum uh, cell automata or classifying their phases is to classify them up to brick walls and translations. So if, as I mentioned, a finite depth quantum circuit is a specific example of quantum cellular automata. And there is another example is uh, just a translation. So I can simultaneously translate all operators along one of the latest directions. So this is also a QCA, but it is different from a finite depth quantum circuit. And so these, these are two important subgroups of QCA, and I want to uh, quotient them. I mean, I want to classify QCA modular brick walls and translations. And this is the problem of topo classification of topological phases of unitary dynamics. And let me uh, briefly overview the known results, some of the known results. Uh, so there is a constructive proof in one dimension. So saying that in the absence of symmetries, all QCA are only combinations of translations and uh, finite depth quantum circuits. On the opposite, if we turn on some symmetry, we require our QCA to preserve some symmetry, then there are plenty of phases, even in one dimension. Um, and there is a generalization of the uh, one-dimensional uh, index computation to two-dimension that also says that uh, there are no non-trivial QCA in two dimensions. And finally, we obtain truly non-trivial QCA in, even, or in three dimensions, even bosonic ones. Um, even though the complete classification of quantum cellular automata is not known to my knowledge, unless we are in the Clifford framework. So thanks to Zhang Wan Ha, we know everything about Clifford QCA in all the dimensions. So th there's a very uh, beautiful paper that came out last year that provides a complete classification of Clifford QCA up to very reasonable assumptions. So assume that um, our QCA are Clifford and translation invariant then. As I said, I'll uh, talk more about Cliffordness. Uh, so we just need to fix the uh, dimension of our lattice and we put uh, some number of copies of prime p-dimensional qubits at every uh, unit cell, assuming that p is prime. And then we obtain the group CDP and they are all trivial up to three dimensions. And in three dimension, the group of non-trivial Clifford QCA is isomorphic to the weak group of bilinear forms over FP vector spaces. So. For p equals two, it's a, it's a group of order two. And for p, all other p's, it's a, it's a group of order four. Um, so it's a very tractable group and we know um, the representatives exactly. All right. Um, so in, a, in, our t in my talk, I want to uh, give this problem. Yeah. Uh, so for a non-time dimension, all those come from the five dimensions, Ah, there should be, okay, we do not expect anything new, but it will be more complicated in the sense that, you know, uh, um, yeah, I mean, physically, we do not expect anything new, I believe. Uh, right. Um, yeah, so uh, in this talk, I want to give this a uh, problem, uh, 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 a flavor of homotopy problem. Uh, so I, I will later introduce some uh, space such that connected components of this space will correspond to uh, phases of QCA and uh, loops in this space will correspond to periodic dynamics. Um, yeah, so this space might, hold, might have a non-contractible you know, cycles and Accordingly, we'll we'll get a non-trivial uh, periodic unitary dynamics, non-trivial in the sense that it's not contractible. So it, yeah, it's more or less clear how to think of uh, periodic locally generated unitaries, also known as Floquet uh, uh, unitaries. But what about uh, what do we mean by a loop of finite depth quantum circuits? It's uh, so we fix some uh, 
state, the reference state, the, whether it be the product state or the, the product Hamiltonian, we start evolving with, with our circuits such that we're getting back to the product Hamiltonian at the end of our evolution. So instead of a brick wall, we have a brick well, or if you will, we have a brick sewer here. Yeah, so, um, all right. Right, so let me now uh, dive into the uh, Clifford framework. Yeah, as uh, I think I stated the problem. Um, right, so let me warm up. Let me begin with a simple uh, quantum mechanics with a two-level system with a qubit. So the algebra of observables acting on one single qubit is the algebra of complex two by two matrices. And there is a very important subgroup in this algebra, the polygroup of order 16. And uh, yeah, the Clifford uh, unitary is a unitary in this two by two matrices that normalizes the polygroup, that preserves the polygroup. I'll, uh, yeah, on the next slide, I'll, I'll repeat it. So before, yeah, go into Clifford unitaries. Let me just uh, prepare a bit, massage the uh, Clifford, uh, sorry, the Pauli group. Uh, so first of all, we forget the phases. We forget plus minus I and etc. And uh, we will be left with the uh, abelian group of order four, Z2 plus Z2 or F2 plus F2 as I call it. And uh, we just map X, Pauli X and Pauli Z into the uh, basis elements of this vector space such that multiplication in the Pauli group becomes the addition in the vector space. So indeed, x squared will correspond to a vector, a column vector with the coordinates two, zero, and it's the same as zero, zero mod two, and indeed x, x squared is one. So everything checks out. Uh, but it's a bit too much to forget all the phases. So we want to forget the overall phase of our, of our uh, Pauli group, but we want to recover the commutation relations. And we do this by introducing a symplectic form. So we think of X and Z as conjugate variables. And they their commutant is given by the uh, their commutant is given by this uh, encoded by this symplectic form. So we just uh, evaluate this symplectic form lambda on the corresponding vectors in our vector space. And this gives us uh, some element of F2, 0, 1, and it gives us the commutation relations. So for example, this is example for X and Z. So in other words, we uh, trade our polygroup to, for, uh, for a two-dimensional F2 vector space equipped with a symplectic form. All right. So, and the Clifford unitaries then will be unitaries that normalize the Pauli group. But of course, the Pauli group normalizes itself. So we consider it trivial. So we, uh, I'll always be talking about reduced Clifford group, which means Clifford unitaries modulo the uh, Pauli group. What's the action? Oh, it's a joint action. Yeah. So we are in the Heisenberg picture. So. Everything acts jointly. So we're interested in how uh, yeah, operator evolution works. So we always take unitaries and conjugate the uh, other operators. That's why we don't care about the phases because we just, uh, yeah, everything is, we are really interested in projective unitaries. All right. And so the crucial result, which is very useful, is that reduced Clifford unitaries are isomorphic to symplectic transformations on this uh, two dimensional vector space. Yeah. And I will, uh, on the next few slides, I'm gonna generalize it to many body. But before that, let me just, uh, 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 yeah, let me just briefly tell you that we can generalize it first to any prime uh, qubits, p-dimensional qubits, and you can have n copies of them. We get in a larger power group, but we project it to a uh, 2n, dimensional vector space over the field FP and the uh, reduced Clifford unitaries will be isomorphic to the symplectic transformation of um, acting on this uh, symplectic vector space, all right? 
So, yeah, now we are um, uh, continuing with the many body uh, setup. So now we assume translation invariance and we have a d-dimensional cubic lattice. So instead of uh, uh, instead of the vector space Fp, we have an uh, Laurent polynomials of d variables with the coefficients in Fp. So this uh, the meaning of this uh, formal variables is to track down the uh, location of the generalized Pauli operators. We first introduced the formal Pauli ring. And we noticed that it's very, it will be very important for us that this ring is equipped with an evolution that just uh, reflects uh, over the uh, origin. Uh, this will be important to, again, to get to, so we obtain a correct commutation relations. And uh, in this setup, we get some n-dimensional free modular over this ring, uh, the Pauli ring. And we send, uh, we project generalized Pauli operators on the many body system of a many body system to some modular L, and then generalized Pauli Z must be projected to the dual modular. So these are uh, L and L star are isomorphic, but they are not the same. Uh, and commutation relations are recovered with the use of the standard anti remission form now. So, in zero dimensions, we had a bilinear symplectic form, and now we have anti-remission form in sesquilinear. And the Pauli, and the tr we trade the Pauli modular for a free. Uh, sorry, we, tr we, tr we trade the Pauli group of all Pauli operators, local Pauli operators acting on our many-body system, for the uh, free Pauli modular equipped with the anti-remission form. All right. Uh, so this is an example. Uh, consider a two-dimensional lattice with a single uh, cuted per unit cell. So yeah, so we have a formal ring of Laurent polynomials of two variables. And if I have a Pauli X located with coordinates I1 and I2, uh, then I map it to not to one as before, but to a monomial whose uh, powers uh, detect the coordinate um, on the lattice. And uh, in order to get the commutation relations, we uh, evaluate the anti remission form on the corresponding vectors. And then we take the zeroth power, the coefficient of the zeroth power of a resulting uh, Laurent polynomial. And this gives us the phase. So and this is the correct phase that they commute only in this. The, sorry, they might not commute only if they are on this acting on the same side, All right? And uh, by the analogy, the Clifford QCA here are correspond to automorphism of the Pauli modular that preserves the anti-remission form. And uh, by analogy, I will call this group of Clifford QCA a symplectic group. Even though it's a bit inaccurate, because uh, you know when you say symplectic group, it's some it means it preserves some uh, bilinear form, but in our case it's anti-remission, so it's sesquilinear. But yeah, it's for the purpose of this talk, right? And uh, so here is a recap what we've had so far. Uh, we have a we can say we have an abstract commutative ring with involution. And we have a module, F3R R module of the form L plus L, L star equipped with the anti remission form. And we say that Clifford QCA correspond to automorphism of this module that preserve the anti remission form. So this is the formalization of the group of Clifford QCA. And as I mentioned, there are two important subgroups of uh, Clifford QCA, namely shallow Clifford circuits and uh, translations. Uh, so uh, shallow circuits correspond to the group of elementary symplectic transformations, while translations correspond to the uh, hyperbolic to the uh, diagonal subgroup of symplectic uh, transformations. And uh, yeah, one last piece. Uh, 
is that we assume that we have access to any finite number of auxiliary qubits. So in other words, we can enlarge our Pauli modular in order to, you know, maybe some QCA is, is non-trivial when act on two qubits per side, but then we can add more and it will become trivial. Um, so we stabilize our symplectic um, and general linear groups. So we just uh, take the limit of inclusions of groups acting on larger and larger uh, Pauli modulus. And to this end, we formulate the problem of classification of phases of unitary dynamics, of Clifford unitary dynamics, as the quotient of symplectic group, stable symplectic group, modulates elementary and hyperbolic subgroups. So we formulated this problem in a quantum information, many body theory as a, as a group theory problem, a problem in, in abstract algebra. Uh, so as I mentioned, Zheng Guan Ha uh, used this uh, you know, identification to calculate this uh, group, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, give it as you know a taste of Hamoto B problem and uh, yeah, and we'll do something new. Yeah, and just to, yes, good place. Oh yeah, R, I mean, I just don't want to like, R is a ring, it is the Pauli ring. So in zero dimension, this is just the field FP. In one, in our case, it's uh, the ring of Laurent polynomials. Yeah, and uh, you know, for the next fifteen maybe slides, uh, I don't even need to specify the ring. Yeah. So I just yeah I just uh, did it for again mainly for the groups you have here are they only discrete. No, so the uh, in zero dimension the C the uh, Clifford unitary group is, uh, oh, sorry, discrete. Yes, discrete, not finite, but discrete. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, but they are highly infinite. Well, except for the last one. So the uh, after, after we quotient everything, we'll get, in a, we'll get a, a finite group. So yeah, just to um, you know make a quick remark where we are, uh, you might, uh, uh, encounter a topological uh, K-theory or its uh, generalization, algebraic K-theory. And uh, so what we are secretly doing here is uh, the so-called Hermitian K-theory. It's a branch of algebraic K-theory. So essentially, if you have a ring, then K0 of a ring is the uh, growth in the group of the monoid of isomorphism classes of uh, finitely generated projective modulus over this ring. And K1 can be identified with the, the general linear group for this ring or modular the elementary general linear group. And this is the first two lines refer to the algebraic K theory and the third and fourth line refer to Hermitian K theory. So we have similar finitely generated modular growth in the group of them, but this modular are also equipped with uh, some anti-Hermitian form. And uh, the first Hermitian K theory group is, uh, I mean, yeah, the first, I mean, K1 uh, is uh, the group of QCA moduli of GQC. But unfortunately, just give me a sec. So there is still a redundancy because we, uh, yeah, because even K KSP1 is still usually still big. Yeah. I don't know the question, but like, can you know the connection? So I'm familiar with this classification for like bundles. Right. You know. Holds. Yeah. So what is the what is that? Like? Yeah. So uh, there is a yeah. So um, uh, you can view, for example, K zero. You can connect K zero in some cases. So if the ring is uh, a commutative ring of uh, so if you, you can view the uh, all right. So in, in topological K theory, you have a growth in D group of vector bundles, and these vector bundles. So their sections can be seen as a modulus over the uh, coordinate ring and uh, over the ring of functions defined in this uh, space. And uh, so basically K zero of the ring of functions 
will be the topological K theory in good cases, right? Um, I do not see uh, uh, connection between uh, K1 algebraic K1 and topological, honestly, but K0 is uh, does generalize. Yeah. And in fact, I mean, we started this project because I believe that, uh, well, we believe that uh, QCA must be related to some K theory. Uh, like uh, we, okay, we suspected originally operator K theory. And then Ichen taught me about uh, Clifford QCA and uh, yeah, we found that yeah, there is uh, something from uh, Hermitian K theory. So yeah, as I said, we can obtain K1 and it's still big, but when we uh, quotient by the translations that are also trivial, we get a finite group and uh, this is called, this is known of as the L theory group by Andrew Ranitsky or uh, higher with group by Max Kahobi. Yeah. I just want to add one comment. So if you want to understand these uh, things from uh, vector bundle stuff and you know, apply to kind of scenario system, you can look at one of the Nikos Reed papers. Yeah. You use this algebraic uh, K theory to to do this um, hand to memory stuff, and there you have this polynomial grains. Or, yeah, um, I think he, he was working on locally supported functions on yeah, the, uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so it's also his algebraic um, yeah. you know, formulation. All right, so how do we uh, study QCA? How we just, uh, so there is a good object, you know, they act on stabilizer Hamiltonians, they map stabilizer Hamiltonians to stabilizer Hamiltonians. So I want to, uh, yeah, uh, briefly talk about um, stabilizer Hamiltonians. So stabilizer Hamiltonians is some Hamiltonian which is translation invariant, invariant and which is a uh, uh, yeah and whose local terms are mutually commute and made of parallel operators. And uh, I don't know who was the first to make this observation, but I want to give credit to Zhang Wanha, who used the stabilizer modular formalism. So basically. There is no physical information lost if we go from stabilizer Hamiltonian to the so-called stabilizer modular. So we can do a lot of stuff with this uh, stabilizer modular. So in particular, we can calculate the ground state degeneracy, et cetera. Uh, stabilizer modular is the, uh, is the modular generated by the interaction terms in my Hamiltonian. So I just take these interaction types I rewrite them, you know, using this formalism as column vectors, and I just, you know, generate modular, like use use these uh, terms as a generators. So, for example, look at the cluster Hamiltonian. So there are just two terms. This is how they've been written in this formalism, um, because again, these are like this this whole, you know, like series is a translation of one single term. So that it corresponds to this column vector. And I just uh, take this term and generate a module with them. And it's gonna be just a one dimensional, um, one -dimensional uh, uh, module, a sub module of the Pauli module, right? So this is how it works. And as I mentioned, there is no information lost. Um, many Hamiltonian, like any module can have many generators. And, but nevertheless, I mean, all these uh, generating sets are physically equivalent. And uh, so, yeah, I want to talk, I want to specify on special Hamiltonians generating very special uh, modulus. Um, so if, uh, so by definition, any uh, stabilizer Hamiltonian generates a isotropic submodule of the Pauli module because the terms mutually commute they it means that the uh, form encoding the commutation relations degenerates on this sub module and it means that uh the sub this the stabilizer module is always isotropic but then number two is something we impose we want that the uh stabilizer modular so the stabilizer hamiltonian it, it doesn't have it we wanted to not have any uh, local symmetries or extensive ground state degeneracy. Uh, so we don't want any operators from the Pauli module that commute with the Hamiltonian, but not in the Hamiltonian already. So it means that the stabilizer module is co-isotropic. And finally, we impose a stricter condition. We want that the stabilizer module to be a direct summand in the Pauli module or 
we want it to be a projective module. And it implies that the Hamiltonian is a, a short range entangled or invertible. So the stabilizer modulus satisfying one, two, and three are called Lagrangian submodulus, and this is our main uh, yeah, object of our interest. Uh, so as I mentioned, so there is a, some connection between stabilizer modulus and Hamiltonians, and we want to study the simple, the simplest uh, stabilizer modulus, Lagrangian, and for any uh, Pauli uh, module L plus L star, we introduce the Lagrangian Grassmannian, the set of all Lagrangian submodules. And as, again, we do stabilization procedure, so we can add uh, ancillas. Uh, and yeah, this, this Lagrangian Grassmannian has a, always has a distinguished point, which is the uh, trivial product state Hamiltonian. In our case, we take the product state in the X basis. And the good property of this Lagrangian Grassmannian is that the group of Clifford QCX transitively, I can obtain any, uh, I can map any Lagrangian to any other Lagrangian by with the QCA. So there we have a, uh, we have a map from um, QCA to Lagrangian, you know, we just can take a QCA and look at where, uh, where it sends the uh, product state. Or and vice versa, if we have a Lagrangian, we can ask what QCA disentangles this Lagrangian. And it turns out that uh, if two QCA disentangle any some Lagrangian, then they must be uh, related, must belong to the same phase. And this is the connection between Lagrangian, Grassmannian, and QCA that we will use uh, extensively. Um, Right, so next I want to talk about homotopies of modules. So far I was talking about only uh, algebra and now it's a bit of geometry. So the Lagrangian Grassmannian I mentioned, it's not a manifold by any mean, but it's, uh, it's a something called a scheme. Uh, so this is something from the algebraic geometry we are. And what does it mean to do homotopy theory? Naively, I would take an interval and map and consider maps from the interval to the Lagrangian Grassmannian. But the problem is that if we want to do, if we want to stay within the algebraic geometry we are, um, it doesn't work naively because the interval is not a scheme. So instead we take the whole uh, fine line and uh, the uh, coordinate ring of the affine line is the uh, ring of usual polynomials. And this motivates our definition of two homotopic modules. So two Lagrangians are homotopy equivalent if there exists uh, a, another Lagrangian over the extended ring that evaluates at our two Lagrangians over a non-extended ring. Uh, so if I have, so R of T means extension, you know, with the usual polynomials with the four informal variable T, and this extension comes with two evaluations. I can evaluate any polynomial ring at zero and one. This corresponds to my endpoints. So this is the definition of our, our definition of homotopy. And our first result is that uh, this set of connected components of Lagrange and Grassmannian is the same as the uh, space of orbits under FDQC where pi zero is in the sense defined in the previous slide, the space of path connected components. And, and yeah, unfortunately, this current state of Hermitian K theory does not allow us to talk about Q bits. So P equals two is prohibited, unfortunately. So only Q treats Q whatever, but not Q bits. Um, yeah, and the, so that, that using this result, we can uh, associate phases of Clifford unitary dynamics with the set of connected components of Lagrange and Grassmannians if we also get rid of uh, some trivial paths. Uh, good, but now we, I want to talk about loops. This is our, the problem we are solving is uh, homotopy classification of loops. Uh, yeah, so a loop is a, path is a periodic path essentially. Um, and uh, the loops, the space of loops is denoted by omega L. And as I mentioned, uh, then loops 
in the Lagrangian Grassmannian will correspond to a periodic unitary Clifford unitary dynamics. And uh, homotopy classes of loops in the Lagrangian Grassmannian are distinguished with the use of uh, generalization of the Maslow index that I want to talk about now. Uh, right. So, as a warm up, let me remind you something uh, from quantum mechanics. So the Pauli ring is the ring of real numbers. And the, the consider just one dimensional quantum mechanics. I have a, a coordinate x and the conjugate variable p. And both, they form the uh, phase space R2. And the Lagrangians in R2 is basically the set of lines passing through the origin in R2. In other words, the Lagrangian Grassmannian in R2 is uh, RP1. And homotopy topologically equivalent to the historical. And we know that the space of, well, the fundamental group of uh, RP1 is uh, Z. And uh, we can see the Maslow index as a, as a map inducing this isomorphism. And uh, in fact, you will uh, encounter the Maslow index uh, when you did a quasi-classical WKB approximation. So there is a correction term to the quantization condition because uh, if I have a like bounding potential and I have a periodic uh, trajectory, so it makes it makes two turning. It has two turning points, and this is why we have uh, this, this Maslow correction, the uh, quasi-classical quantization. Um, so this is secretly the uh, uh, Maslow index. Right. So uh, later I will, we, we are in the, we're using the tools of algebraic geometry. So we assume that all the curves, all the loops are algebraic. They are parameterized by algebraic equations. And I want to uh, consider an example, uh, quantum mechanics example, but it's uh, of an algebraic loop. So let me just take a concrete parameterized uh, loop in R2. So it doesn't look like a circle because it's a semicircle in R2, but uh, when we go to RP1, we identify antipodal points. So it's indeed, a, it's, a, it's a loop in RP1, right? Uh, and this uh, loop has a winding number one, and it has Maslow index one. And in the next slide, I'm going to I'm going to explain how we compute the Maslow index without making any plots. So here it's simple. I mean, I, I this is a very nice plot. I specifically chose this parameterization. Yeah, but uh, what if I don't have access to I don't know, to a pen and paper in or Mathematica? Uh, so there is an ancient technique from 19th century, uh, the technique of storm sequences. So it prescribes me um, how to how can I compute the uh, uh, Maslow index of such a loop. So first we do linearization. We divide the upper polynomial by the lower polynomial, and we uh, uh, write down the residues of this division. So it's a uh, degree three polynomial, I can divide it three times. And this way I obtain linearization of this parameterization. Next, I form a bilinear form that depends only on these residues. And surprisingly, the Maslow index, this geometric quantity, will be obtained as the signature of this matrix depending on T that is evaluated at one and at zero. So indeed, if you can do that, then you'll obtain one. Uh, and secretly, why? Well, we, when we calculate the signature of a bilinear form, it's an integer number. It's a difference of uh, positive and negative eigenvalues. And this is the same as the width group of the field of reals, which is the, the ring of integers. And this is the same as the fundamental group of the real Lagrangian Grassmannian. So long story short, we generalize it to any ring. 
and do something similar. Uh, we do linearization. We, have, we assume with our loop is parameterized by some uh, polynomials. We need to linearize them and we form uh, some permission form. And the result is that the phi one of L of, of Lagrangian Grassmannian is the same as the space of connected components of Hermitian forms. Well, I'm I'm a bit hesitant. I do not use pi one here because it's not a it's not a group really. It's a, still a it's an abelian monoid, and this is a one of the results of uh, fundamental K theory by uh, Max B. But it's still okay. What can we do for this? Uh, can we compute this pi zero f of r? Not yet. It's still big. Uh, but we then we can actually identify some loops that are look really trivial, and we caution them out. And we obtain a finite group. And this is the result. So we quotient by the um, set of trivial loops and obtain a sorry, sub monoid of trivial loops and uh, use this result for our specific ring of Laurent polynomials. And this is what we obtain. We have no non trivial uh, homotopy classes of loops in dimensions up to four. Fortunately, the first loops we obtain only in four dimensions. And uh, of course, I want to match it with the classification of Clifford QCA. Recall, we work with the odd P. And yes, they do match with the offset with the, with the dimension shift. So um, homotopy classes of loop of Clifford circuits in the D dimensions are the same as uh, Clifford QCA in D minus one dimension. Uh, so it's a bit uh, sad that we didn't find, you know, like three-dimensional loops because we could use them. We could, you know, try to you know, maybe simulate them in the lab or in some system, but uh, that's sad. But what's good is that we confirm the bulk boundary correspondence. So there is a version of uh, Kitaev's conjecture about short range entangled systems. So that it, uh, it, it connects short range entangled phases in D and D plus and, and loops of these phases in D plus one dimensions. And there is a similar um, statement, at least in the, the folklore level, about uh, unitary dynamics, about QCA and the uh, Floquet phases. And it does hold, and, and actually, uh, Regarding the bulk boundary correspondence, there are, I recommend the papers of uh, Michael Levin and Carolyn Chang, who is uh, in the audience. You can ask her. And uh, yeah, and finally, we found the application of uh, Hermitian or algebraic K theory. Uh, even though our ring is uh, fairly simple, so ring of Laurent polynomials, you well. You, should, you can see them as, uh, well, as rings of uh, products of circles, something like that, over, uh, yeah, we define it. Uh, well, thank you very much for your attention. Perfect. Yeah, sorry, I have no idea. I can build the time. Yeah, 36. Good. Uh, I ask one question. Uh, do you have a concrete example about the uh, non-trivial trees? Yes. Well, we uh, yes we can. Uh, we we do have a concrete example. So this um, classification is based on the existence of uh, like exotic objects. So basically, there are exotic QCA, and we know them, and there are exotic uh, loops. And they are somewhat related. So I'm not sure if we can give you like concrete unitary, but at least uh, in the in this language of symplectic matrices, we do know them. Yeah. So this presented in your paper. Uh no. Well, it exists and uh, yeah, I can tell you. So another question is that you mentioned in the beginning uh, your 
an inventory is strictly local. Yes. That is a um, hardware condition than being local open regarding this exponential scale. Right. What if we consider local um, the framework, we turn off the framework to see if we that one? Uh, well, it's a good question. I, I'm i wondering, yes, if we, yeah, I have some ideas on how we can uh, approach this, but uh, like what's stated here in this method, naively they will uh, immediately fail because, well, we consider circuits and uh, with circuits, you can get only strictly unitary evolution, right? So there will be no, I, I to my understanding, there will be no description in terms of uh, symplectic matrices. And uh, my talk, uh, you know, is not applicable at all, naively. Yeah. On, that, on the other hand, uh, there are other versions of Hermitian K theory for general categories or DG complexes, and it might be more relevant to the general case. Uh, but, yeah. Questions? Yeah. Can you also talk about higher computing groups? Uh, yeah, but they must be. Uh, so, what we do here is sort of, uh, mm, well, this is like fundamental theorems, but uh, 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 I believe we'll not get anything new, but uh, yeah, okay. I don't know. We don't have thought, thought about it, but <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, first of all, it's not clear what it means. Um, like there are many, you know, so here we use uh, um, we use the affine line, right? Uh, to model our paths and they might be periodic. But uh, like when we uh, have like, uh, for example, maps from S2, the Ringo function on S2 is not the product of uh, like polynomials, so it's more complicated. So it might be more complicated, but I don't expect don't expect anything new actually. So, yeah. well, but in short, I don't know. Yeah. There's no other question. Let's thank uh, Roman again for this wonderful talk. Thank you. Oh, there's a, oh, there is a chat, but uh, I think it was. Uh, no, no, it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you very much for coming, the Zoom audience. Mm -hmm.